So far we've seen two different ways we can go about solving systems of equations. We saw that we can graph the two lines and find the point where they intersect. That point will give me the x and y value that I can plug into both equations to make them true at the same time. We also saw the substitution method where we solve for one variable and then plug that into the other equation. Today I'm going to show you yet another method which actually comes from the substitution method. We call it elimination or sometimes we call it the addition method. When we use this method, here's what we're looking for. First of all, we have to get our equations in standard form with the x's and y's on the left and the constant on the right. Once we've done that, we force ourselves to get an opposite variable, for example, positive 3x and negative 3x, so that they'll cancel out. Then we add the two equations together and we solve for our variables. Now let's take a look at an example so that makes a little bit more sense. In our first example, this is actually set up nicely for us, notice our both of our equations are in standard form already. <clears throat> That's our first step. The next step is to make sure we have opposite variables. Notice here I have positive 1y, here I have negative 1y. Those are opposites. So once I have those opposites, and notice I have them boxed in red, I add everything else together. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2x. Positive 1y minus 1y, no y's left. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 2x equals 2. I solve that and get x equals 1. Now I need to find the y value that goes with this. In order to find the y value, I choose either one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one. I happen to choose negative x plus y equals 1 negative x plus y equals 1, plug that 1 in there, negative 1 plus y equals 1, and therefore y equals 2. So the solution to this system is 1, 2. x equals 1, y equals 2. Remember, x equals 1 and y equals 2, those are the only two numbers I can plug into both of these equations so that they're both true at the same time. There are no other pairs of numbers that will do that. Example 2 is set up very similarly to this. Everything's lined up and ready to go. Please pause the video here and give example 2 a try. Let's see how you did. Example 2, we have 2x plus 5y equals negative 1. 15x minus 5y equals negative 50. We have opposite y's, and so we're left with 2 and 15, 17x equals negative 51. Solve and get x equals negative 3. Now that I have my x value, I have to find the y value that goes along with it. Well, I just pick one of the equations. Again, it doesn't matter which one. I picked the first one, and I plugged in the negative 3. That gave me y equals 1. Therefore, the solution to this system is the point negative 3, 1. x equals negative 3, y equals 1. On example 3, we have to do a little bit of work before we can begin. Remember, both equations have to be in standard form with the x's aligned, the y's aligned, and then the constants. Well, this here is not written in standard form. I have to subtract 5x from both sides. When I do that, I have negative 5x plus 2y equals negative 7. I also have 5x plus 4y equals 1. Notice how nicely this worked out. Negative 5x and positive 5x, those are opposites. When I add them together, I have 0x. So this gives me 6y equals negative 6, y equals negative 1. This time we happen to find our y first, and that's okay, that's no problem. Now we just have to find the x that goes with it. So let's choose one of the equations, plug negative 1 in for y, and let's see what we get. I chose this equation here, substituted in the negative 1, and I came up with x equals 1. So the solution is negative 1, 1. x equals 1, y equals negative 1. Example 4 is very similar to this. Please pause the video here, and let's see how you do. Let's take a look. Once again, we have to rewrite our equation into standard form. 3x plus 6y equals 12, negative 3x minus 6y equals 12. Oh, well, look at this. In this case, both of our variables canceled out. 
zero x's, zero y's equals 24. Remember, when both of our variables cancel out, we have a special case, either parallel lines or the lines are the same. If we get something that makes no sense, in this case 0 equals 24, well, then we know it's the parallel line case. If it makes no sense, there is no solution. The lines never intersect. Example 15 is very similar. If we get it into standard form, once again, our variables all canceled out. But, this time what we're left with actually makes sense. 0 equals 0. Because it makes sense, they must be the same line. And therefore, we have an infinite number of solutions. The special cases you run into periodically, it's a good idea to remember if what you get makes no sense, there's no solution. And if what you get does make sense, there's an infinite number of solutions. Now we're going to continue into the next section and we're going to take a look at the first example there. Here we're given 3x plus 7y equals negative 12. We're also given 5x plus 14y equals negative 13. Our equations are in standard form, but notice that nothing is opposite. We have a 3 and a 5, a 7 and a 14. You can approach this many different ways. In this section, I'll suggest ways to approach a problem, but you may try something different, and that's perfectly okay. Remember, the goal is to get opposite variables. So here I have a positive 7 and a positive 14. But I can do this. I can multiply both sides of the equation by the same number. That's the multiplication property of equality. So if I multiply both sides up here by negative 2, that gives me negative 6x minus 14y equals negative 24. And, I'm sorry, positive 24, because we have a negative times a negative. Now we have an opposite variable, negative 14, positive 14. Now we can use the addition method. Our y's cancel out. We're left with negative x equals 11, so x equals negative 11. And now we just go through and find the value that goes with y. We find that the solution is the point negative 11, 3. x is negative 11, y is 3. So really the only different thing here was that we had to multiply one of the equations by some number. I'm going to ask you to try the next example. Please pause the video here and then come back. We'll see how you did. Let's take a look. On the next example, we have 5x minus 6y equals 92, 15x plus y equals 48. You had several, examples, several methods here you could do. You could have multiplied the top one by the number negative 3, because that would have given you a negative 15 and a positive 15. Or perhaps you decided to multiply the bottom one by 6 so that you'd have a negative 6 and a positive 6. Why? So either method would work. No matter which method you chose, you should have come out with a solution of 4, negative 12. Now sometimes multiplying just one of the equations is not sufficient. Sometimes you need to multiply both of them. <clears throat> Take a look here. We have 2x plus 5y equals negative 1, and down here we have 3x plus 4y equals 9. Well, I can't multiply the top by something nice to make either a negative 3 or a negative 4. And I can't multiply down here nicely to get a negative 2 or a negative 5. But I can multiply both equations by whatever number I want to, as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. I decided I'm going to force my x's to cancel out. You could have chosen the y's. If I want my x's to cancel out, if I multiply up here by 3 and down here by negative 2, it'll give me opposite numbers. Notice I just took the coefficients here and multiplied the opposite equation. This here gives me 6x plus 15y equals negative 3. Down here I get negative 6x minus 8y equals negative 18. Now I have my opposite variable and I just go through y equals negative 3 
and then I solve for x by plugging into whichever equation I want, and I get x equals 7. So the solution here is 7, negative 3. The final example is for you to try. In this example, there are actually some decimals, and I'd like for you to give that example a try. Come back here, and let's take a look at it. Let's take a look. In the final example, we had 0.5x minus 0.75y equals negative 3.25. Down here, I had nothing that was the opposite, but I did have a 1y. And since I had a 1y, I could multiply that bottom by 0.75, and now I have opposite variables. I go through, use the addition method, x equals 10, y equals 11, so the solution is the point 10, 11. So here's what you should know. You can use the addition method to solve any system of equations that you want to. You, it's very similar to the substitution method. I'll show you that tomorrow, actually, how they're related. This is just the third way to do the same thing that we've already done. What you want to do, get your equations in the standard form, force yourself to have opposite variables, either the x's or the y's, one positive, one negative, with the same coefficient, 5 and 5, or 10 and 10, add them together, solve through, find the other value, and then always be sure to check your work, make sure the answer makes sense. That's what you need to know about using the addition method to solve systems of equations.